first I wanted to, to jump into the new album, The Owl. Mm -hmm. And there, in addition to your drumming, there's also uh, the percussion done by Daniel. Right. And there's some programmed uh, uh, drum a lot of pieces. A lot of programmed stuff. In right. Fact. Yeah. So what I'm wondering is, you know, in that kind of album environment, how do you carve out your space? It's a very interesting question. And I think that there is no particular answer. <laughs> and, and I hate to be so vague and ambiguous about it, but it depends on the song. It depends on the, the producer that you're working with. Because we worked with several different producers on this. Uh, uh, so it depends on what their tendencies are. And there was one tune that we did where we had the little zygote of the idea, the basics. Mm -hmm. We, as a band, we knocked out this really incredible backing track. It's, uh, we all thought it was beautiful and in, in, in every possible way. It made you want to dance, it made you want to, uh, made you want to get funky, everything. It was, musically, it was so almost perfect for us, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then we send it off and then it gets chopped up into little bits and processed and rearranged and but that was the tendency of the producer okay you know what i mean so yeah. it had nothing to do with us it had nothing to do with the, the the song itself it was just what the producer where his mind was at creatively mm -hmm. um and so you know when you're as far as like riding between drums and percussion and and all of those little, and the electronics thing that's yeah. going on. It just, it's situational. It just depends on the song. Okay. Because you, ultimately we want the song to be served to the highest that it can be served. You know, yeah. we want, that's what we want. That's what we're going for. Right. But yeah, but you know, with, with the average band, you know, there's just the drummer, you know. Right. Uh, uh, for the average album, you know. Um, and so, you know, I found it interesting that you know there's in the the field of percussion on this album. There's a oh. there's a lot of people joining in. You know, and yeah. so um, what's the key also to learning how to play well with others, so to speak? Play well with um, the percussion. Play well with the electronics. I I think the biggest the, the 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 most helpful thing you can keep in mind for doing that is to to listen and to be aware. And so, for example, when Daniel's playing, sometimes he'll play a part, you know, and that part will just, for whatever reason, catch the ear of whoever's in the, in the booth and go, oh, yeah, why don't we make that into the loop? Mm -hmm. And then everything gets deconstructed and reconstructed around this loop. And so, you know, in that kind of context, you want to just listen and, and, and give space to those ideas that as they come up mm -hmm. in a live context you know when you have a track going that's got a lot of these electronic elements in it um, and then Daniel has what he's going on you know what he's got going on that maybe he's playing a part from the record maybe he's playing an additional part mm -hmm. that's an embellishment yeah and so from my perspective my job is to hit the high points, hit the, like the strong beats, mm -hmm. um, embellish where I can, but pretty much be aware and listen to and be open to what's happening musically with the electronic end of things mm -hmm. and what's happening with Daniel's end of things. Mm -hmm. um, so if he picks up a shaker and starts playing an intricate pattern, then I am more than likely going to lessen what I do on the hi-hat since there's similar sounds. Mm -hmm. And so I let that, you know, I. Step I defer back. to him. Yeah, it's like, you know, out of love, you know, for the music and out of love for him, mm -hmm. you know, because he's, you know, he's an incredible player and masterful musician in his own right. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to take away, I don't want to detract from what he's doing. Yeah. but And, and also I think that brings up a, a great point of lack of ego in the sense that... <coughs> There are a lot of musicians with egos and who, who fight for the limelight and fight for the attention, you know, in this world. And so it's really cool to hear yeah. that at the level you guys are at and, you know, amazing experienced musicians, 
sometimes the best thing you guys do is just pull back a little and like, all right, take yeah. you take it from here, and then I'll come well, back in later. And you know, if you if we have an idea, if somebody has a musical idea mm -hmm. that they really strongly believe in, then they're gonna they're gonna say something. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So like, if Danny has a beautiful idea that he really feels strongly about and feels like it needs to be an integral part of the song, then he'll speak up and say, hey man, I'm doing this thing, it's really kind of cool. I would appreciate it if you would help me to bring it to the forefront, bring it to life. Mm -hmm. And same thing, in, in the other direction, I'll say, hey man, I'm really thinking like, this is this groove's gonna work, help me to, help me to, to, to state this in the way that we, we wanna state it. And, mm -hmm. and so that's what we do, you know, we work together. And we try to do that as a band, you know. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if Coy has a, a guitar riff that he's really feeling is really adding to the song, yeah, then he will say, "Hey guys, I'm I've got this guitar thing. I think it's really cool. We should explore it." Mm -hmm. And we do. Yeah, you know, you try to be. If you can serve the song, then you can. You have to be willing to do it without ego, mm -hmm. you know.